Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dublin. Uh, just some housekeeping. UNDP have a plaque for every city that's been represented here, and they're over on my left hand side, your right hand side. Ronald is just there. So over the next um, two days, would it be possible for you to connect with Ronald and Adam from UNDP as they wish to present you with a plaque and also take a photograph? So they're just over there at the, on, the, on your right hand side at the back of the room. Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Peter Finnegan. He's Director of e Economy and International Relations at Dublin City Council. And he has been the leader of the team from Dublin who's put the program together. And Peter is going to facilitate this morning. Mr. Peter Finnegan. Right, folks, in a, in a few minutes, our plenary session speakers will come in and will take their seats. But just ahead of that, can I emphasize that in the exhibition center area, you will find these little leaflets that we hope you will fill in with challenges that pertain to your city, because we're very anxious to ensure that there is a legacy from this event and that the challenges that are gathered over the coming days will actually be circulated to the United Nations and to the European Union in what we're calling the Great Book of Dublin Challenges around poverty and poverty issues. I'd like to begin the process of this morning as we wait on the speakers coming in to acknowledge all of those who have made today possible. And there's a lot of work that has gone into today. And I want to start by acknowledging all the partner organizations. But first and foremost, I want to acknowledge our speakers and our plenary panel who are coming in to join us at the moment. So please be upstanding and give a warm round of applause for our speakers. So in acknowledging all those that have made this possible, I want to in particular acknowledge our partners in the UNDP, and particularly Adam Rogers and Ronald Dirks, and our partners in UN Women, and especially Laura, uh, I hope I get this right, Copa Bianco. Uh, and please forgive me if I, uh, if I slip on some names. Uh, I also want to particularly acknowledge from our own office, the lady whom I consider the hero of the last year, Helen O'Leary, who has carried the flame that has made this uh, event possible and is passionate about the issues that pertain to poverty and social equity. There are many people who have supported it and it wouldn't have happened without the support of Dublin City Council and the support of our current Lord Mayor Nishir Murray, who's here to my left, and the support of his predecessor, Andrew Montagu, who led the initial kind of application. And in particular, the support of the City Manager, John Tierney, and the Assistant City Manager, who's here today, Philip McGuire. So I want to acknowledge both of those. I also want to acknowledge the industry partners, particularly Intel, uh, who have supported us. And finally, and most importantly, uh, our good friend, Minister Joe Costello, and the Department of Foreign Affairs came in with critical support to make it happen. And the work of the Minister and the work of Irish Aid, and in particular the work of Jerry Cunningham from the Department of Foreign Affairs, I want to thank them for it and applaud them because without it, we wouldn't be here today. If you think of it, um, each of us this morning was lucky enough to wake it up and jump in a hot shower, hopefully, and have a light in their room. But in many places around the world, it's ironic that 135 years 
after Thomas Edison invited, invented that basic piece of technology, the light bulb, we still have 1.3 billion people who are still living in darkness with no access to electricity and 2.7 billion still cook over open fires. So we're asking the question today is why is it that the most fundamental technologies, never mind the more advanced technologies that have come on stream since, that are and can transform lives and develop economies are still absent in many corners of our increasingly interdependent and network globe. Why is it today that one in every seven people in our planet still go hungry, yet technology has revolutionized crop and produce food production? How do one, over one billion people continue to be denied constant access to clean water and sanitation? So how healthy, if I borrow Barack Obama's phrase, can the heartbeat of humanity be when so many throughout the world we create continue to live in poverty? So this event today is about addressing those issues in the context of the impact that technology is having in our lives and in the belief that we have here in Dublin that there must be a social dividend to economic progress. There must be a social dividend to technolo technological change and development. And it is imperative that the technologies that are permeating our lives are rolled out to make a difference in our world. One great champion of that is our patron. And he, his, he himself is currently on a state visit to France. But with the support of the Ballyfermot um, Senior College, we have been able to video a short video message from His Excellency the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, which will open our event today. The President of Ireland. Minlem Treslu, the Cola Cock of Ayatia, a Sukna Cogalisha, er over Fir Hovaktok, Bokhtamus, Ekru. I warmly congratulate Dublin City Council on hosting this eighth forum of the World Alliance of Cities Against Poverty. Today, chronic hunger affects one in seven, or approximately 925 million of the world's 6.8 billion people every day. The principal source of hunger is the dire poverty exacerbated by gross inequalities that scandalously persist. Eradicating this poverty and its consequences is, I suggest, the greatest moral and ethical challenge we as a global community face today. The Forum will benefit from the experience and acknowledge global leadership of two former and distinguished presidents, Michel Bachelet and Mary Robinson, both of whom bring a wealth of wisdom, passion, and expertise to your forum. They have already contributed so much on the core and interlinked issues facing the world today, human rights, climate justice, and women's empowerment. I acknowledge their contribution and I welcome them, as I do you all. I am pleased to address you as the patron of the forum and I offer a sincere Cave Mila Fulcher to all our visitors today from whatever part of our shared and fragile planet that they come. The challenges we face on our planet are challenges that we must face and solve together, be it climate change, migrant rights, youth unemployment, homelessness, the security of all our citizens, and in particular, the most vulnerable, especially women and children, often existing as migrants without protection or sustenance. These challenges are at the heart of Ireland's overseas aid program as we seek to tackle the scourge of hunger and undernutrition. With ever-increasing improvements in transport and communications technology, we have the opportunity to use these new means to address these challenges together and to share our information and our expertise. In the Irish language, we have a proverb. 
Ni nart go carla kela. In many parts of Africa, they say umoja. Throughout the world, you would have similar proverbs that essentially mean there is no greater strength than that which comes from working together. May I wish you well in your work over the next coming two days in bringing together the wide-ranging expertise you have from so many cities, from local and national governments, from civil society, from technology experts, from community activists. I know that having listened to and shared your ideas and experience with each other, that you will generate new ideas and find new ways in which we can collectively cooperate to overcome the challenges faced by our global citizens. My fucking square, to conclude, my wish is that all of you will benefit from the sharing of the knowledge that each of you bring to the forum. I know that this knowledge will not go unused and that each participant will go back to his or her own community with new and inclusive ideas to make their own communities more sustainable, creative and safe. Ganairi live in Urnaba. Garamaki.